The rise of more affordable direct drive systems in sim racing has given more people than ever access to the kind of strong, accurate forces direct drive can produce, which is undoubtedly a good thing. But along with those stronger, more accurate forces comes the trade-off that you're going to need something strong to mount it to. Typically, when you're shopping for a sim racing cockpit, there are three main criteria. Is it comfortable? Is it strong? And is it affordable? And you usually only get to pick two of those three. So today, we'll see if the GT Lite Pro can check all three boxes. So as mentioned, this is the GT Lite Pro from Next Level Racing. So just off the top, I will let you know that Next Level Racing sent me this cockpit for free to review. Uh, no money changed hands and the words and thoughts are my own. So what is the GT Lite Pro cockpit from Next Level Racing? Well, this is the follow-up to their GT Lite cockpit. I've reviewed that on my channel before and it's their lightweight and foldable cockpit. And it's designed for users who don't have permanent space to allocate to sim racing at the end of the day or if you're having guests over, if you wanna fold this away not have to stare at your sim gear, the GT Lite or FGT Lite would have been perfect solutions. With this Pro, they've really stepped up their game on two major fronts from what I can tell. Uh, the comfort of the seat, it has additional padding but is still breathable, and also the strength. So Next Level Racing mentions that this cockpit is rated for wheels up to 13 Newton meters of uh, peak torque. So that peak torque rating means it can handle the forces put out by more common wheels like the Logitech G Pro, uh, the Thrustmaster T818, the Moza Racing R9, R12, the Fanatec CSL DD, even with the boost kit, all those come in under 13 Newton meters of torque. And it is also pre-drilled for those manufacturers, so you can uh, directly mount your gear onto this cockpit and not have to worry about clamping it down. Another key feature of this GT Lite Pro cockpit is adjustability. It's meant for users of all sizes. I'm a big guy and I fit no problem. You have adjustability uh, of the pedals. You can either lay them flat or angle them. Uh, you can also adjust the pitch of the seat. You can also adjust the uh, how upright you want the back of your seat. And uh, even the angle of the wheel can be adjusted using a little knob that's under the wheelbase. So there's a huge amount of adjustability here. Um, another one of the key features is the fact that this folds away with the gear attached. So uh, it's just a few simple steps and basically you unplug all your gear and uh, a few minutes later you can fold it down into a very compact size that can fit away uh, in a closet or you know I don't think under your bed that might be a bit of a stretch but uh, in a closet or in your garage you know it's no problem to move it around. It even has wheels on, uh, on the back legs so it can roll away easy and in addition to having mounting holes for your pedals and wheelbase. It also has the ability to accept uh, shifters and handbrakes uh, using the uh, plate that's supplied with the GT Lite Pro for mounting that gear uh, off to the side. And it can be uh, mounted to either side depending on which side of the car you drive on. So a uh, huge amount of features here. Uh, again, is it comfortable? Is it strong? And is it affordable? And on paper, at least, this seems to uh, check all those boxes. So let's go ahead and uh, do some driving. I'll share my thoughts and then we'll come back to the table and I'll share my good, neutral and bad. Okay, so thoughts on driving with the Next Level Racing GT Lite Pro cockpit. Overall, I'm impressed, whereas the standard GT Lite was more functional in terms of its comfort. The Pro is very easy to settle into over long periods. The added padding works nicely with the breathable backing of the seat to keep you cool and comfy. I was driving with the seat in a flat position, and even at 2 meters or 6 feet 6 inches tall, I was able to fit in the cockpit with enough clearance for my knees, and later on I did adjust the pitch of the seat and it created even more space for me. I was actually quite comfortable. As far as strength, I did want to put the GT Lite through its paces, so I did a 100% force feedback challenge with my Logitech G Pro, which you're seeing the results of on, on your screen now. You can see there is a fair bit of movement in the wheelbase, which I don't think can be avoided given the cockpit arrangement. And I will also add that this level of force feedback is unrealistic. In fact, I did stop the game and dialed the peak torque back from 11 to eight Newton meters of peak torque. And you can see the results on your screen now. And this is still more torque than I would typically run, but the, for the purposes of testing, I did keep it at this level. And you can see that noticeable improvement in the amount of movement in the wheelbase. But overall, the driving experience was very good. I don't have any major concerns. I don't think it's gonna replace my FGT Elite cockpit anytime soon, but it was comfortable and a stable cockpit, and I enjoyed my time in it. All right, so time for my final thoughts on the Next Level Racing GT Lite 
Pro cockpit. And we'll go over the good, neutral, and bad, things I like, things I'm just kind of okay with, and then things I don't like about this cockpit. Uh, so starting off with the good, first thing is the comfort. Uh, I think Next Level Racing has done a fantastic job. It's a very comfortable cockpit, uh, surprisingly so for a chair that's meant to, you know, collapse and be as thin as possible and as light as possible. But uh, keeping that breathable fabric and adding that padding uh, makes for a very good overall experience. Uh, you know, I sat in it for more than an hour uh, driving, getting B-roll for this video and no issues whatsoever with comfort. Uh, and the adjustable back and the adjustable pitch really adds to that so uh, yeah just a very uh, comfortable seat overall and the second thing in the good is the price I think at $300 this is a very solid value I think for those looking for somebody to have a non-permanent cockpit setup again something that folds away when you have company over or when you're you know taking a break from sim racing whatever um, I think that this is you know at $300 a very good value and I think you get a lot for this you know you get that added strength you get that added comfort and uh, overall I just think it's a, a good value at 300 US dollars and then of course we can talk about the adjustability of this uh, cockpit um, you know having the ability to incline the pedals if you so choose or lay them flat and you can change the pitch of the seat and uh, Again, me being a bigger guy, the fact that I can fit in there at, uh, you know, two meters or six foot six uh, without having to, you know, compromise comfort really says a lot. And, you know, you can pull those pedals in if you want. Uh, you can lower the seat uh, uh, pitch, you know, to get your, your knees lower to the ground. If you're a shorter person, you can adjust the uh, angle of the wheelbase. I mean, there's just a lot of adjustability here uh, to get things set up for yourself. And it kind of complements that uh, overall comfort uh, of the cockpit and uh, you know getting everything suited to your your body style and your preference for uh, where the pedals and uh, and wheel are relative to your hands and feet um, I, I think is a big deal so well done on the adjustability of this cockpit and then of course we talk about the uh, ability to fold this away so you know that's obviously one of the biggest selling features of the uh, GT Lite and uh, FGT Lite is the fact that it you know folds up with the equipment on and can be put away it's just a few simple steps uh, the first time might take you a little bit but uh, once you get the hang of it is actually very simple and uh, then it even has those wheels to roll it away so um, I think it's great I think you know getting into this cockpit you know that one of the selling features is going to be the ability to put this away uh, with ease and uh, you know it accomplishes that and uh, could hardly be easier and uh, it's just a, a very well engineered cockpit I would say and finally, in the good category, uh, the fact that the uh, wheel plate is drilled for most common wheel bases is a, is a really good thing. And then it has these slots on the um, on on the pedals. What you you know usually expect to be a pedal deck, uh, so you can basically adjust it however you want and accom accommodate most uh, pedal sets. That's great. Like if you had to clamp everything, it would kind of defeat the purpose of having you know that added strength for direct drive and you know. Um, strength for load cell pedals and things like that but uh, you can turn in bolts and uh, get this set uh, to your liking and uh, get it get a nice strong setup so that's a huge bonus and in the neutral category things I'm just kind of okay with um, getting in and out of it is the first one I do find it's a little bit awkward this might be exclusive to tall people but I do find uh, even though it's cool that you can swing it open and uh, sit down in it it does seem like it's a little bit tough to sort of squeeze through there and then try and you know manipulate your legs down into uh, the proper spot uh, it's just a little bit tricky and uh, I don't exactly know how you would engineer this better I think maybe if the wheel swung a little bit further out it might be good uh, but it's just a bit tight as it is is it a deal breaker not at all but it's just one of those things where uh, I think it could be improved in future editions and then the second thing in the neutral category is the strength and I think a lot of people would be surprised to see me put strength in here um, but it's more how the strength is marketed like it's it's you know supposed to be rated up to 13, 13 newton meters of peak torque and you saw how it behaved when there was 11 newton meters of peak torque applied to it. There was a lot of shake in that wheel. Again, I ran that as hard as I could. Is that a realistic scenario? No, not, not at all. But I just want people to be aware that if you have, you know, something with, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 newton meters of peak torque and you slap it on this thing, that it's not going to be a perfectly solid rock. So it kind of would indicate that according to what I'm reading about the marketing, it would kind of indicate that it can stand up to it and it's built for it and it's going to be rock solid. 
I don't get that sense. I get the sense that it stands up to it. And, uh, you know, at those high peaks, uh, there is going to be some wiggle. So, uh, you know, like the getting in and out is not at all a deal breaker. Just something to be aware of. I'll put it in the neutral category as, yes, it stands up to those peak torque, but don't expect it to be like, again, as good as say my elite uh, cockpit or, you know, an 80-20 rig or something like that, where uh, you just get no movement whatsoever. There is going to be some movement uh, in this sort of portable collapsible style of, uh, of rig. And in the bad category, I only really have one bad thing to say, and that is the reinforcing straps that go from sort of the front side of the pedals to up near um, uh, where the wheelbase is mounted. Those are reinforcing straps, those keep the cockpit strong, but the little clips that uh, it comes with to uh, to tie those straps on or to clamp those straps on, uh, they're kind of weak and I bent one already. It was easy enough to just bend it back into place, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird system. I wish they had done something a little bit stronger. Again, you're adding strength with this, uh, with this strap and I would think that, that the component Components that go into that strength uh, should be strong enough to, you know, reinforce that strategy, but they're not. That clip, uh, again, uh, of the four, I only bent one and I was able to bend it back right away, but I was surprised to see it bend. So I think those clips do need revisiting. It'd be nice if future editions had something a little bit stronger. Because again, it is just a bit of a flimsy piece and uh, for a product that's marketing itself uh, for its improved strength, uh, I think that does need to uh, step up a little bit. But that's it. So those are my thoughts on the GT Lite Pro cockpit from Next Level Racing. Overall, a really, really great piece of gear. Um, I mentioned off the top that uh, sort of the big three that you're searching for in a cockpit, uh, is it comfortable? Is it strong? Is it affordable? And I'd say they got two and a half of those. I would say that um, in terms of, uh, you know, affordability uh, uh, and value, uh, yes, it ranks very high. In terms of comfort, it ranks very high as well. Excellent job on that. Uh, in terms of strength, uh, I just have a little bit of trouble saying, you know, two thumbs up, huge endorsement from 604. Yes, this thing is strong enough to uh, handle your 13 newton meter peak torque. Um, there's sort of an understand, there has to be an understanding that you're going to run your DD motor a little bit lower than, uh, you know, absolute flat out. And uh, even at that, there's going to be a little wiggle. So it's more of an understanding thing. So I'm going to score this two and a half out of three. But uh, again, overall, just a very, very uh, great cockpit from Next Level Racing and they've done a great job. So if you're in the market for something like this, uh, strong endorsement from me. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a cockpit that will grow with you if you're upgrading from belt or gear drive to direct drive, sort of that uh, mid-tier market. Uh, it's a great option. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.